welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we are just outside Austin, Texas on Lake Travis. A big old deep lake that to be honest, I have not too much experience fishing. But we've got a few hours out here this morning. Um, got a hot tip from a couple fishing buddies that the Guadalupe bass fishing is just on fire out here. So the goal of today's episode of Retro Bassin is to see if we can locate some bass and catch them using nothing but old school electronics. I've got my Tom Man Super 60 fired up here. We are gonna start looking for some rock piles and ledges and hopefully a bass or two. Stick around. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40. The Bass Angler Sports and Society was formed in 1968, and by the early 1970s, competitive bass fish was hotter than a jelly worm on the equator. Bass pros like Tom Mann were looking for an edge on the competition, and the focus soon turned to fish finding electronics. In my research for this episode, I found a great article on Bassmaster.com that outlines the history of the Tom Man Super 60. I'll drop a link to that article down below, but it was definitely a great resource for information on this little black box. Sometime around 1970, a radiologist from Eufaula Hospital began to modify the Heath Kit depth sounders to better shield them from the interference caused by the larger outboards that were becoming popular on bass boats at the time. Being a structure, a fisherman, let's just say the modified units deeply impressed Tom Mann. And he quickly sought the help of several investors to mass produce those depth sounders. Legend has it that Tom and several investors were brainstorming possible names for the new sounder when somebody asked Tom, what is the fastest bird that flies? Being an Alabama game warden, Tom answered, well, the hummingbird, of course. But with his southern drawl, he could not pronounce the G, and so it became known as the hummingbird. Sometime between 1974 and 1975, hummingbird introduced this, the first ever waterproof depth sounder. To really appreciate what a revolution the Super 60 was, you have to understand that most bass fishermen prior to 1975 were relying on above water structure to locate bass. Talking lily pads, lay down trees, even the bank itself. But for all those bass below the water, on road beds, rock piles, points and humps, they were virtually untouched before the Super 60. The term sonar is action acronym for sound navigation and ranging a principle developed during World War II in anti-submarine warfare. A sonar set transmits bursts of ultrasonic energy and then listens for echoes off objects or the lake bottom. Here's a basic overview of how the Super 60 works. First, the sonar unit itself creates an electronic signal, which is converted to an ultrasonic signal by this, the transducer. The signal travels through the water until it's reflected off an object, a fish, or the bottom. That ultrasonic echo hits the transducer and is converted back into an electronic signal, which is ultimately displayed upon this dial, which has a spinning high intensity arc lamp. Distance to different objects below the waterline are calculated by the amount of time it takes that echo to return to the transducer. I have to admit that I did not grow up fishing a flasher style transducer all too often. But when we started the Retro Bassin Project, um, I wanted to fish it old school as much as I could on that 2018 Tracker Heritage and I decided to go with a Tom Man Super 60 as my main console unit. It was a pretty big learning curve to get started and I'm still learning how to really get my Super 60 dialed in. So here is the depth sounder owner's manual from Humminbird. This is pretty cool, check it out. So there. It is a history of sonar. We, we see a boat trying to find a submarine. And if it wasn't for that, uh, that world war, we probably would never have that fish finding invention that we, we do today. One of the things that took me a while to understand about sonar is when I looked at these old school flasher units, I really thought it was just about this. 
finding the depth and no more. But the more I've come to learn about them, the more that I realize you can do a lot more than just figure out how deep you are. Um, you can figure out what the bottom looks like. Depending on the width of the bar, you've either got a hard bottom or a soft bottom. So you can also find underwater brush, like in this scenario. You can identify steep rocky ledges, small fish over an underwater cliff. Um, here the wide signal indicates large fish versus small fish. Ah, there's just so much you can do. And the more that I get used to this unit, the more that I learn. So this is the book that taught me a ton about how to use that little black box, A Man and His Bird by Mr. Tom Mann. We're gonna get into the functionality a little bit, but I do want to show you this. I love this picture. There is Tom Mann hunched over a Super 60, probably scoping out some deep bass during a BASS tournament. <laughs> Looks a heck of a lot different than the stuff you see today for sure. And he also typically had a unit matching up at the bow of the boat. This is a book that I love for a lot of reasons. It's called The Art of Freshwater Fishing. It's got a lot of great artwork, but for our purposes today, I wanna take you to the sonar page. Okay, so here's a really good color illustration of a Tom Man Super 60. Here we've got the surface um, where that transducer signal is originating at zero. Notice we see the first echo here, right around 13 feet. And there is the second echo. For the most part, depending on how hard the bottom is, you'll either get one extra echo, or in the case of a really hard bottom, you'll get two extra echoes. But right here, this is a standard reading of a pretty flat bottom, again, at a depth of about 13 feet. Okay, so here we go. So this is a uh, scenario of a hard bottom. And you can tell it's a hard bottom by the multiple echoes. So we've got our, at zero, we've got where the uh, ultrasonic signal is sent. The first echo hits the bottom in around 11 feet. And what you're gonna see is that every 11 feet after that, you're gonna get another echo. This lets me know this is a really hard bottom. Now in the case of a soft bottom, we'll show you here. So again, you get that initial signal at zero feet. Here we get our first signal at about 16 feet and notice it's much wider with no echoes. This lets the user know that you are over a soft bottom, uh, again, in about 16 feet. Now in the case of weeds, so initial signal here at zero, um, we're coming down, we can see a, a bit of a solid band here at around 21 feet. But notice there are several blips just up above that 20 foot range. Now, if the boat is stable and these blips come and go, they're probably fish hugging the bottom. But in this scenario, we'll assume those blips are solid. And in the case of solid blips, most likely that is either weeds or a brush pile. Okay, so let's take a look at this scenario here. So um, here's a drop off. This one took me a while to figure out. So initial signal at zero feet. And notice we've got two solid bands independent of one another. What this is showing is that you've got a band here from basically 14 feet to about 21 feet, and then it blacks out, and then it goes again from um, about 28 feet to 34 feet. So what we've got in this scenario are two different levels that the sonar is capturing at the same time. This one was a real challenge for me to, to figure out when I first started using that Super 60, but um, I'm finally getting a little better at it, and hopefully today on the water, we will see some ledges that will reveal themselves like this. So here we go. So this is an interesting scenario. So here we've got some bottom hugging fish on probably, I would say again, a pretty hard bottom because I see two different marks here. Um, so it looks like the bottom here is around 25 feet and you see a few intermittent blips just off the bottom. So you gotta be watching to see these, but if these blips are intermittent, it's most likely a bottom hugging fish as opposed to a weed. Now, suspended fish are a little bit different. So here we go, um, zero feet. We've got our bottom in about 33 feet. And notice right around the 15 foot mark, we see these blips here. That is most likely suspended fish, probably crappie, um, hanging out up over the bottom. 
Okay, so now that we've covered a few basics on the Tom Man Super 60, I'll see you guys back on the water. Have to be honest, when it comes to the retro bassin project, I think there was no more daunting aspect of fishing at old school than fishing with old school electronics. You can get a lot done with a five foot six inch pistol grip rod. Some of the old lures, honestly, I'm starting to think they work better than new lures because there are some old baits that fish have not seen in 40 plus years. So it's almost like a new lure. But there have been some insane uh, advancements in fishing electronics. Um, I mean, you look at the, the Hummingbird Super 60 unit I've got here compared to the Hummingbird units of today. Um, it's quite different, we'll just say that. But we are trying to fish it as old school as much as possible. Yes, you all know that we've got the 2018 Tracker Heritage boat, and there are some finer luxuries that we do appreciate here on the water, like a cell phone charger. Uh, but when it comes to the actual act of fishing, uh, with the exception of maybe modern day fishing line and modern day hooks, we are 100% old school here. So I'm gonna use the Hummingbird Super 60 as well as my front unit, which is a uh, fen color. And we are gonna see if we can locate some bass and catch a few. So here's my vintage Tom Man Super 60 made from Texonic Industries in Lake Eufaula, Alabama. So right now we've got two different lines here. This first line that you see is the surface and the second line is the bottom. Depending on how wide this band is, let you know if you have a hard bottom or a soft bottom. And because we know it's a hard bottom, I want to reduce that as much as possible. So zero, we've got a hard bottom of about 35 foot. And we are just sort of following this little cove back here. Now any intermittent blips, there's a couple different things that can happen. One is if you see an intermittent blip in the water column, that can be fish um, if it's just a quick flash and then goes off. If it's a little bit more solid at the bottom, it could actually be a uh, weed line or even a structure. Um, if you had a tree, let's say we're in 45 feet of water, if the tree was 10 feet tall, you would actually see some extra blips up in here that would be more solid and consistent uh, than a fish blip. Okay, so we just graphed a point up here. Um, overall, what I'm seeing of this lake is that it is a pretty hard, rocky bottom. Um, I have not run over a whole lot of trees yet. We were going up and over that point and I definitely had a few blips of fish just off the bottom in about 30 foot of water. That does jive with the fishing reports that I have been hearing. These fish this time of year, they are starting to move up from deep water and this is a very deep lake. And somewhere between that 15 to 30 foot range is where the most action is. So I saw some pretty good uh, blips on 30 foot. I actually just saw a splash over there. That's where I'm gonna set up and fish. Um, so that was it. That is how we, we found the fish, hopefully with the uh, Super 60. <laughs> it ain't a helix, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm pretty confident that what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna get just up off this point we're gonna throw the troll motor down uh, switch the SLR to the front and see if we can catch some of those fish that we saw showing up just off the bottom in about 30 foot okay we're up at the front of the boat now uh, since I am using my Tom Man Super 6 to locate this fish and I've got my jelly worm hat on I figure it's only appropriate the bait of the day is going to be this, an old school six inch Tom Man jelly worm in the blue color. I've got it rigged up a couple different ways. I've got a Texas rig here. I've also got it on a drop shot. So we're in 15 feet of water now, sort of drifting out a little bit. So I cast it as parallel as I could. And boy, this drop off comes quick. Behind me you can see is a pretty steep bluff wall that we're gonna graph. I got a report that there have been some Guadalupe bass hanging off this ledge. But as you'll see on the Tom Man Super 60, it drops off quick. If you're 25 feet off the shoreline, you could literally be sitting in 40 foot of water or more. But what I'm gonna do is try to graph this stretch of shoreline. We're gonna see if we can find any uh, boulders or ledges or even some fish bunched up 
either on the bottom or suspended uh, just a little bit off it. So one interesting aspect of the Super 60 is that it actually will gauge the depth up to 120 feet. And I'll sort of show you how that happens. We are at 100 feet. And to prove that, I'll show you. I'm gonna start heading in toward the shoreline with this. You're gonna see the depth here go from 100. When it drops down to 60, all of a sudden, it's gonna show up again. It won't disappear like it would if you were really at that 35 foot depth. So we're heading into the shoreline now. We're in about 95 feet of water. And it's gonna start getting shallow real quick. Watch what happens though when we get to 60. And you'll notice that it actually will swing back around to sort of illustrate our point. So now we're coming down to about 80 feet. And by the way, we are, it'd blow your mind how close to the shoreline we are in 80 feet. 75, 70, 65, 60. Now watch, here we go, ready? Keeps on going. 55, 50, 45, see that? So the surface stays and all of a sudden that's how deep we are. So what we've got here, and you'll see in a minute when the boat swings around, we have got a pretty impressive bluff wall that we're gonna be fishing. We're about 30 feet off the shoreline and the depth's already 30 feet down. So as it swings around, you'll see the rock wall. We're just gonna try to get as parallel to the shoreline as we can. I'm gonna position the boat in about 15 feet of water and then cast parallel, sort of at a 45 degree angle. I would like to figure this lake out. It's like one of the closest lakes to my house. I think doorstep to boat ramp, it was about 40, which in Texas ain't bad. But as you can see, it is a big, daunting lake and <laughs> very different from a lot of the stuff that I'm used to fishing. I mean, this thing is well over 100 feet in a lot of parts. And it seems like from the, uh, the reports that I look at, most of the fish are coming out of deep water. I mean, we're talking 30 feet for a large amount of bass. Okay, so no fish in our first couple spots. I've got one more um, little point and stretch to, uh, to fish. We're gonna go ahead and graph this thing with the hummingbird. We're gonna see if we can find the ledge um, and also see if we see any fish or any other sort of structure down there. I think there might be some flooded brush here. Um, there's definitely a little ledge somewhere and hopefully a bass or two. Let's check it out. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how to identify a, a drop off on this unit. So right now, we're actually in 60 feet of water. When we uh, start heading up toward the ledge here, you're gonna see our, uh, our depth meter splice. We're gonna have a line here at 55 and a line at zero. So there we go. Now, there's a rather dramatic drop off that we're gonna hit where it jumps from 30 to 20. So I want you guys to see what happens here. Um, when you're gradually going up a ledge, you're gonna see this line sort of just moves and it creeps up. However, in a situation where you've got a rather severe drop off, you actually see two solid bars. And when this guy here gets to 30, what I expect is gonna happen is you're gonna have a second bar right here. And that is the depth finder picking up two different levels. So watch this. So we're gonna go, as soon as this thing hits 30, get ready, you're gonna start seeing some blips right about here. See that? That's the ledge right there. That is not fish, that's not structure, that's the ledge. And then watch, once we're up on the ledge, boom. It switches to that. And now we're in 15 feet and getting shallower. That is how you identify a ledge with this. That took me a little bit of time to be honest with you, because at first I thought I was maybe looking at some trees or some brush, but actually that is a, a severe drop off that the, uh, the sounder is picking up both 30 foot and 20 foot at the same time. All right, let's go fishing. 
Oh, there's one. Oh, ho. oh. <laughs> one of the old drop shot, a Tom man. Oh, that might be a Guadalupe bass. I don't know. I've never caught one. Let's see. Come here, buddy. Oh. There we go. All right, nice little bass. Man. <laughs> so that worked out perfectly. This was that ledge that we just scanned with the sonar. Turned around, uh, dropped down my uh, old schoolish drop shot rig. I don't know when drop shots were invented, by the way. Um, and we ended up getting this nice little bass. Awesome. Get the hook out, figure out what he is. So I think that looks like a little largemouth to me. Not a Guadalupe. But a nice dark fish. Sweet. I don't know when drop shots were invented, to be honest, but I did hear that they were starting to smoke some fish on drop shots. So we did it retro away. Um, paired that up with this, a six inch Tom Man jelly worm and a classic blue. I guarantee you these Lake Travis bass have not seen a bait this color today or like this year. <laughs> Oh, got one. Oh, got one. He kept like swimming at me. Oh man. There he goes. <laughs> he's very smart, he's very dumb. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. Guadalupe bass. Check it out. Oh man. That is awesome. I have lived in Texas for a couple years now. And I've never caught one of these. This is the Guadalupe bass. Almost looks like a, like a smallmouth-ish looking kind of bass. I wasn't sure if I'd know what they were when I caught one, um, but man, that's awesome. Look at that little guy. <laughs> oh, pretty cool. Hopefully you've enjoyed our foray into catching fish with some vintage electronics. Till next time. Keep those birds a humming, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.